Welcome to the Exceed product training call. My name is Susan Nicholas. I am the Director of Marketing and Promotions for Exceed. We're excited you could be here. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Tonight's topic is the incredible and amazing Fresh. And I am pleased to introduce you to Exceed's Director of Research and Development, Dr. Leslie Jacobs. He'll be answering some of the questions you've emailed to us over the past week and giving you some great information about Fresh. Thanks for being here, Dr. Leslie, and I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you very much. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Ask Dr. Leslie. I am Dr. Leslie Jacobs, and I'm calling from uh, Exceeds the Corporate Headquarters here in Las Vegas. And we're going to have a really, really great discussion today about Exceeds Super Green Product Fresh. But before we get started uh, and sharing some of this great information, some of the questions that you, that you have on Fresh, let me just start by saying that the information, the statements that I'm sharing with you have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and our products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent any disease. And in addition to that, the, the information I'm going to be sharing with you is not intended to be taken as medical advice, no therapeutic or medical claims or are there implied or made, so do not alter any medical treatment or the use of medication without the permission of your health care provider. And the FDA regulations prohibit the use of therapeutic or medical claims in conjunction with the sale of any product not approved by the FDA. So with that being said, let's get started. Today's product pick of the week is our amazing tasting super green product, Fresh. Greens, uh, as you know, have, have become such a powerful, powerful trend in the nutritional industry over the last several years. And it's really no surprise because greens are known for their really nutrient density. In other words, they're just packed with hundreds and hundreds of, of great nutrients. So that leads us to question number one. And, and, and out there in the field being asked, some of the information about fresh says that it is nutrient dense. But what does nutrient dense really mean? Well, uh, green products are typically made from vegetables, grasses, and algae. And they are harvested at the peak of their nutritional state. They're then dried at a, at a very low temperature and, and ground into powders. Because more than a, a pound of greens may be used to make just a mere ounce of powder, they offer a really great nutrient density by volume than the green vegetables that you'll find in the produce department of your local supermarket. So even though most of us know that vegetables and cereal grasses are good for us, there are so many of us and so many Americans out there that are basically tempted to just skip the green side of the plate you know, at any type of meal time, whether it's dinner or lunch. And there's green on one side of the plate, and we tend to, you know, a lot of times tend to get to that last or, or sometimes not at all. So it's important to note that the current daily guidelines for fruits and vegetables per day, the recommended is actually now nine servings of fruits and vegetables per day, not the previous five servings, which quite frankly only prevented the deficiency states like rickets and scurvy. So back in the day, they used to say, oh, five servings, uh, bare bone minimum requirements. But yeah, that basically was to prevent deficiency states and certainly not optimal recommendations. And again, optimal recommendations nowadays are nine servings and fruits and vegetables a day. So with so many of us coming short in our daily fruits and vegetable department, a super green product like Fresh provides us with a good way to make up for those deficiencies in that department. So question number two that, that's come across uh, uh, on, on email. Dr. Leslie, you talk a lot about antioxidants and the benefits found in AOX Complete, but how about fresh? I'm assuming the same holds true. Well, the answer to that is absolutely yes. Drinking fresh basically arms your body with an arsenal, and I mean an arsenal of phytonutrient antioxidants to help basically just neutralize the free radical damage that we are exposed to on a daily basis. Just from the air that we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the sheer act of just breathing alone and the requirements of oxygen in, in our body causes the production of free radical damage. And fresh and as AOX complete, basically they help neutralize free radical damage. So also uh, the greens and fresh provides antioxidant support to also help combat maybe even the oxidative stress that, and, and muscle damage that's associated with vigorous workouts and, and subsequently supports, you know, and, and helps with the body's recovery. So that's a very similar modes of action when we're talking about AOX complete and fresh in, in, a many, in many respects. But again, fresh is giving us a kind of a complete different diversification of nutrients in, in more of a, a powder vegetable grass algae form of it. 
but they work very, very, very well together. Question number three. I notice that fresh is a powder that you mix in water. Why not put it in capsules? Also, would it be more practical to just buy vegetables and greens from the store and put them in a juicer? Well, this is really two separate questions, but let's address the first question first. First, why not put the ingredients of fresh into a capsule? Well, we want you to receive basically the phytonutrient benefits of a large amount of greens. And since the largest capsule in general holds about, you know, at least I should say able to swallow larger capsule, holds about 750 milligrams. So you would have to swallow 11 extremely large capsules to get the equivalent of one scoop of fresh. Now, which one sounds better, choking down 11 capsules or drinking a great tasting, better yet amazing tasting green product like fresh? Well, I know that answer already. So yes, we chose not to put it in capsules. We were not expecting anybody nor myself would ever think about consuming 11 capsules of a green product. So it's not a, not a difficult decision on that in that respect. Now let's address the second part of that question. What are the benefits from using fresh compared to other green drinks or blending your own green drink from fresh vegetables and grasses that you get from the supermarket? Well, pre-mixed green juices and smoothies are convenient but generally contain less variety and certainly totally the total quality of greens compared much less total quality greens compared to that that you would do yourself at home. So when it comes to the pre-mixed green juices, no. Too much sugar, they add too many other juices in that, and, and they're very, very uh, limited in, in what kind of greens they're able to put in it because of the shelf life of it. Uh, and store-bought green juices have a lot of apple and other fruit juices to make, um, to make them more palatable. So keep in mind, a lot of even natural sugar is placed in it, but there is definitely clearly more sugar. So um, the end result is, is really much smaller amounts of greens and quite a bit of added sugar when you're talking about pre-mixed um, or, or smoothies getting, getting them in, in that capacity. So why not blend your own green drink using fresh greens or a, a, a powerful, great product with a great nutrients and no added sugar like fresh? Well, the problem that we see so frequently, and I'm just going to include myself in that batch because I was right there. About 10 years ago, I, I decided, I, actually it was more than that, 15 years ago, I decided to just start ju you know, juicing and, and I should say um, doing a green product, fresh greens. Number one, a lot of problems I ran into regarding it. And that's why a lot of people want to drink greens, but they don't. Number one, the expense of it. When you go to the supermarket uh, and the store and you try to buy the wheatgrass, oatgrass, barley, alfalfa, spirulina, kale, extremely, extremely expensive. And then the frequency that I had to go back or you have to go back to the store in order to, to get the product that's fresh and getting fresh wheatgrass or oatgrass or barley or alfalfa, which is, in addition, hard to find in, some, in many, many, many of the stores. But the frequency, you have to go back to the store just to get it so you can have it fresh because these kind of products rot very quickly in the refrigerator and become very rancid. So you're going to the store three times a week. Number three, the inconvenience of cleaning the greens and the preparing the greens and then juicing the greens. And then, of course, you've got, you've got to clean the juicer after that. Number four, you have to drink it basically right away. You can't take it to work. You can't drink it later. When you juice it, you've got to do it right then and there. It does not sit very well. Number five, you can't travel with it. Um, you can't do it on the run. It takes time. So you've got to put time aside by the time you clean. You, you do everything you need to do, then it just takes a lot of time. That's time that a lot of us, so many of us, just don't have. And then lastly, the taste generally when you do greens at home generally doesn't really taste that good. So then you have to add all of these different flavorings in it just to be able to choke it down half the time. And most people aren't able to handle the taste, so they end up not doing it and it doesn't last very long. So answer the question. Honestly, it is so much easier to take one scoop of fresh, mix it with eight ounces of cold water, shake it, or any other liquid you want to really put it in, shake it, boom. It takes less than 15 seconds and you could drink it right out of the same shaker or bottle that you actually put it in. You just shake and drink. It's delicious. It's convenient. It's a phenomenal, I mean a phenomenal tasting super green product and it is so good for you. And again, that nutrient density is also so, so important. So question number four, get asked, what is fresh sweetened with? Well, it's sweetened with stevia leaf extract. 
Stevia is a natural sweetener made from the leaves of the plant species Stevia rebudiniana, R-E-B-A-U-D-I-A-N-A. -A. There's a lot of different um, leaves of the Stevia, but it's one specifically from that specific plant. Now, Stevia's taste has a slower onset and a longer duration than that of sugar. So we're fortunate. We didn't have to really put too much Stevia in fresh because of the other natural flavors that we were able to put in we used in fresh. So fortunately, we needed to only add just a small amount of the Stevia leaf extract to sweeten it. So why do I say that? Why do I say fortunately? Well, because generally speaking, Stevia leaf extract has a very bitter or a licorice-like aftertaste that is that a lot of people just don't like. So to be able to not have to put much in it, although we have a good natural sweetener in there, we, uh, we were able to prevent that bitter or that licorice aftertaste um, without having to put so many such high concentrations. And it uh, definitely would have impacted the taste if we had to put too much of the stevia leaf extract. Um, so a little bit, uh, just a little bit more information on stevia. It's basically, it's an herb. It's in the chrysanthemum family, and it grows wild as a, a small shrub in parts of Paraguay and Brazil. The glycosides in its leaf, um, including up to about 10% of stevia sides, account for its very, really incredible sweet taste, making it uh, quite uh, unique among the nearly 300 other species of the stevia plant. So that's, that, that, that's, that's the... Uh, that's the lowdown on uh, what we sweetened uh, fresh with, uh, again, the stevia leaf extract. So question number five, I've heard at one time that the FDA had a ban on stevia. Well, that's kind of an interesting question. Uh, the answer to that is actually yes. The FDA's position on stevia was way back when somewhat ambiguous in the past. And I'm going to say in the past. So back in 1991, there were some preliminary citations in the literature that caused the FDA to maybe block, actually they did, they blocked the importation and the sale of stevia in this country. But then ironically, that same year, they found that there, there were flaws in that first study. So subsequently, back in 1995, the FDA revised its import alert to allow stevia and its extracts into the United States, and it's used very, very, very frequently in many, in many products. Again, we have it in fresh. Um, but again, you have to be careful with stevia because stevia does have, uh, can have, if you use in high concentrations, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of uh, aftertaste to it. So question number six. Um, yeah, this is a good question. What are some of the benefits of wheatgrass? Oatgrass, barley, alfalfa, kale, and some of the other ingredients that uh, we have in fresh. I know they contain a lot of vitamins and minerals, but what else? Well, that's really, a, it's a good question. Um, Greens, again, such a powerful trend in the nutritional industry nowadays. They, they, greens basically tend to restore and support alkalinity in the body. So the super green abundance of alkaline compounds basically help reduce over acidity within the body. And, and greens tend to detoxify. They contain beneficial enzymes. Uh, they contain fiber to help support digestive health. They have also actually in greens these uh, healthy essential fatty acids and are loaded, and I mean loaded, with phytonutrients and other antioxidant benefits. In addition, uh, wheatgrass, um, you may not know, is one of the best sources of chlorophyll. So a lot of great, great, great uh, benefits you get from wheatgrass, oatgrass, barley, alfalfa, and kale, and some of the other ingredients that we have in fresh. And we have question number seven. I like the fact that, um, well, one of the orders said, uh, I like the fact that you've added digestive enzymes to fresh. I have not seen too many other products do that, so why did we add Exceed? Well, digestive enzymes are basically catalysts uh, that speed up the breakdown of what we call polymetric macromolecules, basically just whole foods in a simple term, into smaller building blocks, basically in order to facilitate its absorption. So you can't, when you consume food in whole foods, you don't absorb whole foods. It literally has to get broken down, broken down, broken down, and broken down, and then ultimately uh, gets absorbed into the, into the system. And all the foods that we eat, again, must be broken down into smaller, simpler, more soluble molecules before they can be properly absorbed. Well, digestive enzymes and digestive, the digestive process that we normally have, that our body normally has, basically starts in the mouth. That's the first place where the digestive process starts to occur. 
it releases certain digestive enzymes secreted by the, the by some of the salivary glands that's in the mouth that actually um, in the submandibular region, just underneath the jaw, and actually uh, empty into the mouth, and it starts the digestive process uh, there. And then the stomach plays a major, one of the bigger roles is actually in the stomach, uh, aids in digestion, and basically the stomach secretes these, these gastric enzymes that play a role in mechanical, in, a, in more of a mechanical sense by basically mixing and crushing the food and mixing and crushing the food, and then in an enzymatic sense by now actually digesting it. So it breaks it down and then starts to kind of break it down into smaller pieces where it can now get passed down into the small intestines. Now, you, you always hear the pancreas and the liver and the gallbladder have their own role in digestive process. But uh, basically, it's the stomach, and then it gets it ready for the small intestines. So sometimes vegetables and greens have a difficult time getting broken down properly. And if it doesn't get broken down properly, this prevents the small intestines from properly absorbing the nutrients. So we added digestive enzymes in fresh to help support the digestive um, process and better absorption of that nutrient density that we talk so much about when it comes to fresh. So not only you breaking it down, but you're able to break it down and now absorb the actual nutrients. Yet uh, another unique benefit that we have in fresh. Question number eight, can I take fresh more than one time per day? And the answer to that is yes. I, I, I get asked that question a lot. You can drink it as many times a day as you want, um, but keep in mind that that uh, fresh does have a lot of fiber in it because of the, the grasses uh, found in the vegetables and the grasses. Just, just, so just make sure you're not drinking so much that, that you're getting very loose stools or, or, or forming diarrhea. And if you do, then just cut it back a little bit. And what I mean by that is I've drank up to four glasses, close to four glasses per day, and I didn't have any problems when it came to that. But if, if in fact you do and you're having three or four or whatever it is and uh, you're doing it and you're tolerating it, it's great. But if you find that the stools are a little loose or a little diarrhea, then cut it back by one glance. You can take three a day or two a day. So it's very user-friendly, so you can really use it any way you want. It's just a healthy, healthy, great alternative. Question number nine. My mom is on a blood thinner called Coumadin, or the generic name is called Warfarin. Why do you say on the label, consult your healthcare provider if you are a blood thinners before drinking fresh? Warfarin or Coumadin is basically a anticoagulant, which means it's a blood thinner. And it's given to reduce the formation of clots in people who have either a heart disease or have had strokes or clots in the legs called DVTs or pulmonary embolisms, which are clots that go to the lung. So we very frequently put people that are, have, have history of clots or forming clots on blood thinners like Warfarin and Coumadin. Foods that are very high in vitamin K, like leafy greeny vegetables, can make warfarin or coumadin less effective in preventing blood clots. So it plays an important role, and you got to play pay attention to what you eat um, when you're taking a blood thinner like warfarin or coumadin. And that's why your healthcare provider, your doctor, usually says, well, if you're if you're on warfarin or coumadin, you have to stay consistent in the amount of greens that you take in per day, whether it's salads or, or vegetables or broccoli or peas or whatever it is, you just have to stay consistent because they monitor blood levels to see how thin your blood gets. So anybody taking this medication needs to be consistent in their daily consumption of greens and vegetables in general, not just in fresh, but I'm talking about in general across the board with any vegetable or green, green product that you, that you have, whether, again, it's salads or it's broccoli or it's peas or whatever it is. So therefore, it's recommended that you seek the advice of your healthcare professional prior to consuming fresh if you are only on a blood thinner like Coumadin or Warfarin. It does not count if you're on aspirin. It doesn't hold true. It's really basically just Coumadin or Warfarin um, and that you have to monitor uh, your, you know, your, your level. So seek the advice of your healthcare professional if you are on Warfarin or Coumadin prior to starting fresh. It's not that you can't use it. It's just that you have to stay consistent with your greens. So we always like to say consult with your healthcare professional. Well, those were nine great, 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 great questions. Um, those are some of the things that we consistently get asked. So those are the ones that we picked for today's session. Another great session today on Ask Dr. Leslie. Don't forget to send your questions into Ask Dr. Leslie at exceedhealth.com. And uh, that's it for today's uh, Ask Dr. Leslie questions. 
Uh, I'll see you next week on Ask Dr. Leslie. Product of the week next week is Infuse. I'm excited about that one. It's another great, great product that we brought out uh, from Exceed. And uh, thanks again, everyone, and keep up the good work out there in the field, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, take care, everyone.